Thank you, patrons. What up, nerds? Welcome to the Nerdy Narrative. My name is Leslie Smith, and today on the channel is my weekly reads. This is where I take the opportunity to share with you what I've been reading during the week, highlights, takeaways from that, and also what I plan to read next. Starting with, I did select a winner for the audiobooks for the first three books in Daniel Barnett's Nightmare Land Chronicles. This series is a post-apocalyptic horror and horror it is. It's one man's journey to find his daughter and his grandchildren, that little white house by the beach. And what starts this journey? One morning in May, the last morning in May, around 8 a.m., the sun goes out. Or does it go out? What happens to the sun? What happens to humanity when the sun is no more? So I did pick a winner for this. I used a random comment picker generator thing that I found on the internet. And the winner for this is Escape to Books 23. I did verify that you were a follower of Daniel's on Instagram. I'm going to get in touch with Daniel, let him know, and he will be in touch with you to get the audiobook credits to you. So congratulations to Escape to Books. I am looking forward to hearing what you think of that series when you're able to get around to listening to it. Anyone else who might be interested in picking the series up for themselves, you can, of course, get the printed version. There is a digital version. The first three books are currently available on Audible. They're narrated by the wonderful Adam gold and the next three books four five and six i believe are going to be available sometime in 2025 i'll keep you all updated so jumping into what i finished reading this week well i've only finished one book and that is my reread of brian lumley's necroscope I saw my friend Nico planning to read this one and i decided to invite myself along and make it a buddy read I'm the only one so far who actually has read and enjoyed the book. I'll let the others update you on their thoughts. I'll have all of their channels listed below. I loved it, but this is a series I read way back in the day as it was coming out. Although I had no idea there are now 16 books in the series. I stopped around book eight. So I'm just going to reread the other seven books and continue forward in the series. I'm very excited. It's not one I would just open up my mouth and recommend to people because it is horror. This is some of the most depraved vampire horror I've ever read. This is the type of vampires that all the books that are coming out these days are like, oh, we're not the kind of vampire that lives off human blood. We live off animals. We don't do this. We don't do that. All of the horrible things that today's vampires don't do these vampires and Necroscope absolutely do. They are the worst vampires I have ever read about to date and I love it. What does that say about me? Don't know, don't care, gonna keep reading them. As far as what I am still currently reading, a Betrayal of Storms by Ben Alderson. I'm gonna finish this one today. I have less than 100 pages. This is not the type of book you can just fly through. Well, you can, but if you're someone like me who appreciates well-written prose, then like me, you might stop and reread several character moments, several impactful, well-delivered lines, and you just have to go back and start the conversation over to just get that full impact of getting to read that line in its full context again. Just passages that are just beautifully written, metaphors that are just... <laughs> I mean, oh my gosh, this is insane. It's, it's no wonder that Angry Robot Books got a hold of this series when it was self-published and said, you know what? We need to release this ourselves. And I am so happy for Ben Alderson, a fellow booktuber and book talker. This is wonderful. I love this book. Oh my goodness. If this is what Fay Romance is, I am very disappointed that I've seen almost all people that have made fun of Fae romances and I just kind of was like, okay, that's probably not something I'm going to jive with. 
um, hello, y'all need to try this one because this might change your mind about the genre. I know I'm going to be reading more. I can't wait to continue this series. I am probably going to, as soon as the next book in the series arrives, which is going to come out in November, early November, and then the third book comes out early December, and then the fourth book I believe is in January. As soon as it arrives on my doorstep, it goes right to the top of the TBR. Love, 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 love this one. It did come out earlier this week. I fully expected to fly through this one have the review up on release day but I just couldn't so it'll be out probably next week so you all can watch that hear all of my thoughts and opinions in the meantime I'll link it in the description so you can read the full book description yourself and it is marketed as a fey romance but that is a subplot it's a really wonderfully written subplot that's just naturally integrated into the political intrigue of the fact that one of the four courts of the fey that has been left without any ruling family member there to hold its magic. It's been running rampant. It's about to explode and get outside the realms of where their territory is that they signed the accords with. So there's about to be a war and that is when the one surviving member of the Winter Court is located. And there is all the scheming. There are those who want this war to break out so they can go and slay humans. And then there are those that don't. Oh my gosh. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Enough of that. Let me move on because I'll just sit here and go ahead and just talk about that book for an hour. The other book that I started is The Land of the Living and the Dead. It's the third book in the first era of the Gale Song series by Shauna Lawless. <sighs> you want to talk about beautifully written prose? Shauna Lawless has that on lock. It is just gorgeous. I'm so excited to see what's going to happen. And I would say to you, if you read the first two books, but you've missed reading the companion novellas, go ahead and quickly read those two. You're going to really appreciate that you've done that in the first couple of chapters of this one. I won't get too deep off into what this one is about because it is the third book in a trilogy. And basically all of the fun, wonderful battles and intrigue and scheming between mortals and immortals, all of this is culminating to come to a head in this one, the last of each of the immortal kind. I'm expecting to go head to head in this one. I'm very excited for it. And there's one character in particular, those of you reading the series, Tomas. I hope he gets his comeuppance. Oh my gosh, I hope he gets his comeuppance in this one. I am pairing this with the audiobook. So audiobook lovers, this is a series. Oh my goodness. It is absolutely wonderful on audiobook. Now I did not listen to book two on audio. This one, there's like five narrators and I've just begun it. So I think I've only heard three different ones so far. I'm enjoying it. I'm not mad at it, though Aoife is the one who did book one. I thought she did a tremendous job. It's something about having those Irish accents to tell me this story about Ireland and its mythology and its history. It just really enhances it, in my opinion. So very happy with this one so far. I'll keep you guys posted on where I'm at. I think this one might be one I end up flying through. I don't want to, but it's just, I need validation. I need to know that some of these characters are going to get a foot up their ass and I just want to hurry up and get there. Now that I've started, I've drugged my feet so long because I didn't want to end this trilogy. But then my buddy Heidi reminded me, Leslie, Shauna is going to write an era two for the Gale song. I don't know the specifics, but I imagine there's going to be a time gap there. I don't know if it's going to be descendants of characters from era one. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't care. I'm going to read it. Anything Shauna Lawless writes, I'm going to read. Same as Ben Alderson. I haven't even finished the first book that I've picked up by him, but he is already on the list of auto buy. Just beautiful writing. I can't, I, I'm addicted to it. Just gorgeous. He's so intentional and attuned to detail. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about Betrayal of Storms anymore, but he's so detailed. Like when we visit the Autumn Court, all of the scents of the city, the Fae who live there, have autumn scents like cinnamon and maple. The way it's described, it's autumn there and the first city that we go to are under these very large trees with golden leaves. 
the things that they eat, everything just, you just get all of your senses involved in the way that Ben Alderson tells a story. Okay, I will stop and try to get through the rest of this video without talking about that book again, but I've been gushing about it since I started it. So I'm only reading The Land of the Living and the Dead and gonna finish up A Betrayal of Storms today. I meant to get started on House of Leaves this week, but I just have kind of had a little bit of a snafu with all the things I had going on. We had friends in town. We had some events we were going to. More events coming up over the next couple of days. So it might be later this weekend when I actually get started on it. But I am going to be reading it. Which is kind of what my initial plan was. Was to read it during the week of Halloween itself. Just so I could add to the whole reading of this book. Having it during Halloween week. Like that's just going to make something more spooky than it is. Does it? Will it? it? Mm, I don't know. And as soon as I finish A Betrayal of Storms, I have an arc here that's going to be coming out November 5th. It's the new one by Marshall Karp. Don't tell me how to die. I've been talking about this book all month, so I won't talk about it anymore here. But this one's, I think, going to be one of those comedic murder mysteries. The book description kind of gives me vibes along the same vein of something sort of similar to Bad Monkey, whether you've read the book or watched the TV series with Vince Vaughn. I'm hoping it is. I'm planning to read that one. I've got a hold on it at my library. So as soon as that one comes through, I'm going to read Bad Monkey and hope that it's as good as the show or most of the time it's better. So looking forward to that. Talking about shows, I haven't done a whole lot of TV watching, but I did start one called Tulsa King. It has Sylvester Stallone starring in it. First episode, he's getting out of prison. He is a mobster. He's part of an Italian family in New York. He has done 25 years in jail and he's kept his mouth shut. He never talked. He never turned rat. He gets out the family still doesn't quite trust him. So they send him to Tulsa, Oklahoma. And they're like, all right, go out there and get in whatever schemes you can get into. Edge out the competition and send us some fat stacks of money, which they absolutely expect him to fail. Wrong. And it's so funny how he reacts to... Tulsa itself, but it also sort of works because he spent 25 years in prison. He's missed out on smartphones, electric vehicles, all sorts of really hilarious things like medical marijuana, how it's legal there and stuff. It's been a joy and he does a great job. He looks a little strange. If they get to a close up, you can tell he's had a lot of work done, which it just up close he's kind of scary looking but it's been a great show so far i think we almost finished watching season one in a single weekend so i imagine this afternoon and tomorrow we're going to watch some more of course the only other thing i've been watching nba season started on the 22nd so the celtics blew out their first team that they played the new york knicks my magic boys just absolutely made Bulls of the Miami Heat. I'm still riding that high. Speaking of the magic, they have a collaboration with a local brewery here, Crooked Can. They had a launch party for it last night. Spoiler alert, for y'all it's Saturday morning. For me it's Friday afternoon. So Thursday night, Chris and I went to that and we got to meet Stuff, the mascot, and show him. We had couples tattoos of Stuff's and he just loved them. We got to try the new lager. We both approved, liked it. They're going to start selling it at the Kia Center today. So when we go to Monday night's game against the Pacers, I'm going to get to have me a nice cold adult beverage to watch the game with. So that's pretty much been my week. And the only other thing I got up to is I managed to wake up with an ear infection yesterday. No, day before yesterday now. Strangest thing. I was not sick, not having any issues. I just kind of leaned over to pick something up off the ground and my ear popped funny. And I thought, well, that sounded strange. And then I noticed that I wasn't hearing that well out of it. And then a couple of hours later, I was like, oh, that's some mildly uncomfortable pressure. And as someone who has had trouble with eardrums rupturing, I went across the street to the little medical place and she's like, oh, guess what? It's already popped. So got some eardrops and some antibiotics. So hopefully that'll get that all taken care of. The problem is it's my one good ear because my eardrums have ruptured so much ever since I was a kid. I've lost a lot of hearing. 
this is my good ear. This is the ear if you ever meet me in person and you talk to me, I automatically tilt my head to you, which is, I think I also do it in videos as well. It's why I tuck my hair behind my ears. Not that it's gonna help me here. It's kind of like when you're driving somewhere and you turn down the radio so you can see better. It's just something I do. So I'm down one good ear this week. So hopefully that's gonna clear up soon. At least it doesn't hurt anymore, but I have rattled on enough. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you next week. Thanks again to all of the wonderful patrons who support the Nerdy Narrative channel. With a special shout out to my top tier patrons, Chad, John, Gail, Amanda, Star, Tara, Anne, Amanda, Andrew, Kate, Ev, and Sharon.